poverty is such a wide spectrum. It's so many people in our community have full time jobs that are that maybe get paid pretty well, and they're still one paycheck away from losing everything. Their child care uh, child care rates are super expensive. They're hard to come by. Um, we have housing. I mean, we're in a housing crisis in this community. It's very hard to get housing, affordable housing. There's a lot of barriers to success. All right, guys, Dan Wise, Wise Media Studios. We're back with another Business Spotlight Thursday. Thanks, Tony. Um, today we have with us United Way Central Washington, and we have Farron Lang and Barbara... Ken Mark Gurney. <laughs> I'm not saying that five times fast. <laughs> Farron, you are the marketing manager, and Barbara, you are uh, community engagement manager. Correct. Okay. So... What is it exactly that United Way Central Washington does? Whoever wants to go first. Uh, United Way of Central Washington is a community services uh, organization. So what we do is we collect funding um, to in turn grant it to local agencies. So that way um, we can kind of keep them accountable um, because our grants, they do have to... um, do check-ins with us. And so then we also offer other programs that we have ourselves. And then we also have a, a partner agencies, um, mostly the ones that we do grants with, but also other agencies just because our nonprofit community is pretty n- tight knit. Yeah. Essentially we're a bank for the nonprofits. We, we are tasked with fundraising and then we are able to give that to the nonprofits across the region and so that they can stay operational. It- So how many of these nonprofits do you guys see that get funding, get money and what they put on paper for what their their causes versus what they really do out in community? Do you ever get contradiction like, hey, we gave you guys money and you're not doing anything with it? We have a committee that is that is tasked with just going through that and making sure we vet heavily all of our resources so that that doesn't happen. I can't say that it's never happened, but I I mean. We have a really like vigorous process of finding out exactly what people do. And Barbara, I think you'd know more a little about that. In my role, I do the <laughs> granting. So I've been with United Way for two years. Okay. Um, I've actually only been in this position for one year. I was hired for something else. Um, but this is where my passion is. So this is like United Way, like the nationwide United Way. And you guys are like the branch mm-hmm. here local. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And so um, as far as like, are applicants not doing what they said they would do in my experience with all looking through like the historical granting um, because we're getting ready to do another grant cycle so I've been looking back Um, I have not seen anybody not hold up to what they said they would do unfortunately there have been some nonprofit agencies that end up dissolving because they weren't able to keep it going so who are some, can you name some of the local organizations that you guys work with? Yeah, absolutely. So right now um, we're ending a two-year grant cycle that we, um, we granted in the beginning of two years, and then we do a year check-in, and then we cut them the check for the second uh, half of their funding. And so as we come to the end of that, we uh, funded nearly 50 programs, over 40 organizations in this last two years. Wow. Yeah, and um, a lot of the really well-known ones, like Catholic Charities, uh, the Union Gospel Mission. uh, YWCA, Rod's House, Salvation Salvation Army. Army. Those are the weller, the more prominent ones in the community. Yeah, we just did a pretty intense interview with uh, um, Union Gospel Mission. Mm, Yeah, Yeah, so that's cool. They're amazing. So, question, somebody, for people out there that are watching that, because there's a lot of people with really great ideas. Mm -hmm on how they could give back to the community. What's the process? Do you guys help with grant writing at all? Do you guys get involved on that? Um, No, but we are actually exploring some options as far as grant writing goes because 
it is it sucks because unless you're a professional grant writer, you don't get that edge when you're submitting these grants. So the people who do this at, like for a living will be able to write a grant that is so well written with their stats and like um, local data as well as, you know, it it takes a lot of time and we don't have that capacity. So we're looking into how we can um, help our other nonprofits as well as ourselves with this grant writing. Um, so we've even considered starting a program where um, we can offer training to other nonprofit agencies so we can all learn how to write these grants. Um, how did you guys get into this? Like, what are your backgrounds? My background, um, I actually started at Junior Achievement. Um, we used to have a facility over in, on University Parkway in Terrace Heights. Um, that building was open for about 10 years. Junior Achievement is still alive and well. We just They just don't have a facility anymore. And I was there for eight years. So I started by volunteering there and then got hired and then worked my way up into programs. And then as COVID came, it shut down the schools. And because that was our that was our focus, that's what we did. Um, it kind of dwindled away and it, we unfortunately had to shut down the building. Um, so then I found work with United Way because they were hiring. And during my time with Junior Achievement, I found that I was passionate um, about nonprofit work and and bringing you know relevant things to people like we want to meet their needs, not just you know look at them and just be like I don't know. Do you guys need another food bank? We want to be able to actually um, see what their needs are and provide them with those needs or a partner who does that. Um, so that's just where my passion is. Yeah, and I've been in marketing for several years now, and with my previous type of marketing, I had so many different businesses that I worked for essentially because, you know, you you understand the digital marketing aspect of it where you have so many different clientels in different industries that I you can't really give 100% to every single person when you're giving them selected marketing to each one. So I was interested in finding an organization that I could not only give back to the community because I like doing 40 hours of work week and making the community richer and not a person richer. So I just really enjoyed that aspect. And now I can do things like this and bring awareness to, not, you know, the United Way of Central Washington in these ways or mayor meetings where it's a little bit more of a holistic approach to marketing where I'm able to say, let's go meet all these mayors and see what they actually need. Because we sat with, the you know, the mayor of Union Gap the other day, and they're telling us that in Union Gap, residents have trouble accessing their water. They say that in order for some residents to get water in their own faucets, their neighbor has to flush the toilet. Wow. Yeah. And I didn't know that. And that's I, not something I would have ever known. So. I live in Union Gap. I'm glad I don't. Yeah. Do that. Not in that neighborhood, right? That is, you know, that's a great way to put it is making the community richer instead of an individual richer. Mm -hmm. It seems like when you kind of put things into perspective and you focus on doing things for the right reason, you end up reaping rewards kind of indirectly yeah. when, it, when it's not your main focus. Mm -hmm. Now, I noticed you guys put in here in, you know, what's most important for you to know about Yakima, uh, talking about poverty, the myths of poverty, what actual poverty looks like. So you're the one that filled this out, right? Yeah. So what do you mean by that? Like what what is your guys' idea of poverty or what is the uh, um, United Way of Central Washington? How do they view poverty and what, what's their? Well, I think in, in the community, there's such an understanding that, you know, we think poverty, we'll see homeless on the street and we'll say, oh, poverty or, you know, people really struggling in poverty. Poverty is such a wide spectrum. It's so many people in our community have full-time jobs that are that maybe get paid pretty well and they're still one paycheck away from losing everything their child care uh, child care rates are super expensive they're hard to come by um we have housing i mean we're in a housing crisis in this community it's very hard to get housing affordable housing there's a lot of barriers to success so i think people don't realize that a lot of working people in our community that maybe is their coworker or their neighbor that they would never think is living in poverty that is. So 
really removing the stigma around poverty and letting the community realize that it's a lot more Common. people than we think. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we talk about that. I kind of thought that's where you're going to go with it. I just don't know, like, what do you guys see as an answer? I know it's, it, I don't even know if there is one. It is so multifaceted. There are so many different moving pieces that need to be simultaneously and generational. So we've gotten to this with generational poverty. It's going to take generations to get out. I think so it's too. It's not an overnight solution. Right. We need to have better we need to have better access to childcare. We need to have better access to transportation in this community. Housing, we're having a crowd. Again, the, the rates are so inflated. And in order for people to just build that wealth that they would create generational, they have to be able to buy. They have to be able to get out of the the rat race they're in. And it's it's almost impossible for a lot of people. And there's not enough housing. There's not enough mental health programs. Mm -hmm. And if you, the problem is, is all of the different programs that exist, they don't really communicate. So it's like you've got somebody that goes to Camp Hope or Union Gospel Mission to get certain services and like, well, you got to go over to this place. Mm -hmm. Now you're sending somebody from point A to point B to point Z back to point B that's already stressed the oh, Mind you, with very little transportation, right? Or none. Yeah. You know, that's, maybe yeah. not even a pair of shoes. United Way of Central Washington, our overall vision that we are working towards um, is something called the Help Center. And it's going to be an actual center where people can come and we would partner with our ad other agencies to have all these services under one roof. Um, so that way somebody who is having trouble with transportation can come here and she's not going to like a single mom isn't going to be sent around town looking for child care, food assistance, uh, clothing and, you know, things to to refurnish her house after leaving a domestic violence situation. And so that's kind of a big dream of ours that we are just in the baby steps of really getting off the ground um, because of that. And we. It is unfortunate that there actually isn't enough communication between nonprofit agencies. Um, yesterday, it's I almost like some of them are like at combating. Yes. So yesterday we were at a summer uh, free summer meals uh, seminar. We're meeting with some nonprofits that were saying things about like getting out into White Swan and going to Ma's house. And I was like, we're doing these things. Mm -hmm. We've already been doing We've already things. been there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and it's just my coworker who was there was saying, you know, we're all going after the same funding. So, and he referred to it as the Hunger Games of mm. the nonprofit world. That's really what it is, is we we need somebody that just needs to open a nonprofit and call it something like kick the fucking doors open because <laughs> you we, the, the one-stop shop is needed. Yeah. yeah. When you really take all of the weight of, of the chaos in your life and you, you put it all on somebody and you don't give them a way to identify, like, let's talk about step one, your short-term goal. I understand you want to have a house, a life, sober, and all these things, but let's look at what you can do today. We're given all these tools, and when you're doing, when everything's going great for you, life is easy. But what happens when you lose your job, when your wife breaks up with you, when a child passes away? How do you deal with that type of, like, mental destruction? You have to be able to, you got to train yourself for this. There's got to be something in place. Well, and financially too, because you lose your license because you didn't pay a ticket. Now you don't, well, not only do you pay the ticket, but you have to pay for your license to get reinstated and right. then the, the new license and you can't drive your car. You can't go to work until you get it. So now you're behind on everything else. It's just. At the same time, we do need to instill accountability, Yeah. but we need to get that person to a stable place. Mm -hmm. Even though they may have been a F up their entire life, doesn't mean we have to be defined by our past choices and no, actions. Exactly. And you know. Yes, somebody could say you shouldn't have done that or you shouldn't have paid this. But I don't know one person that's perfect that's never done anything that's ever set them back. I'm all for helping the communities where it needs help, being someone that's been in those situations. And all of my misfortune really came from me not thinking things through, kind of making very fast choices, very mm -hmm. fast decisions, not thinking about the consequences. Impulsive, yeah, very absolutely, impulsive. absolutely. And, you know, United Way, we have a saying it's you're helping give a hand up not a hand out right because we're, we're not really just saying here you go go figure it out like we got you out of it you we're trying to help them get back on their feet slowly so that they can one build the confidence a lot of people just need that confidence to say i got a win today and now i feel so good about that win that i can go get another win where it's not just like it's a you know a lot of it is a mindset too and i totally agree with that like it's hard to be consistently in a bad spot and sometimes those little wins is what can gets you out of that so you know the success stories sometimes are just as simple as getting a kid a jacket yeah you know because it's it might just be a small gesture but to that kid that's 
a new jacket, you know, or new shoes. And it's things that are teaching somebody how to fill out a resume the right way. And, yeah. And, and, getting them an outfit for their interview so that they could be successful because we're starting a professional closet as well. So oh, we have awesome. we're doing a lot. Um, we have a team of four. So it's really hard because we're in charge of all of Kittitas County and Yakima County. So um, well, if, if, if we can help in any way. Yeah. No, we'll hold is, you to it. <laughs> yeah. No. Hey, this is what we're trying. To, I mean, yeah. me and Tony are trying to embed ourselves into the community. And it comes with it comes with, you know, love and hate at the same time, because not everything we do is going to be pleasing to people. Mm -hmm. But we know that if we're doing things for the right reasons, it usually spawns into you get the, the results you're looking for in the end. But you can't make everybody happy. No. And, and why? Why would you want to? You know, it's important things investing in our community and trying to give more to the community so that it's better for our kids. And that's the generational that change that we're going to see is if we continue to focus on the next generation, we're going to see improvement. It's not always about what's going to happen today that's right. going to affect tomorrow. This is a long-term process. Right. That's that's the whole goal is building a better future for leaving it better than when, what, it, what it was now when we leave. Um, talking about donations, funding, who are your guys' like who's your ideal target for people to get involved with, uh, whether it's financially or like boots on the ground? Both really. I mean, I mean everybody. So there's so many different ways to get involved. We have a donation. Uh, I mean, sorry, we have a volunteer platform. It's called www.volunteercentralwad.com. Is it com or org? I, it's org. Oh, dot org. Sorry. You're doing so good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, United Way does have a centralized volunteer platform. So our volunteer platform is where our partner agencies as well as anyone else um, it is free for them to use they can post their volunteer needs on this platform um, it could say like uh, we're looking for people who are going to do this outdoor activity with us on this day or something that's more open-ended like for to do um, hand out meals and it could be any day um, so that way we're finding something for everyone. So a volunteer can go look at that and pick through the different opportunities and be like, oh, I love working outside or I'm only available this day and there's something on this day. So that's kind of what our platform is. And it's it's very cool because we are looking for anybody. And of course, we really want to connect with the younger generation. Um, and it is trending that they are more likely to give their time than they are money. So it's actually a really good opportunity. Yeah, but we would like money too. We like we like no, money. There, no, but there's a lot of different ways to donate financially as well. So they could do give just a regular donation through our website, or they could do donation with their business. Um, I have a lot of business owner friends, and recently I've just been saying, how do you want to see a change in the community? What's passionate to you? So we did a CNS takeover yesterday, and twenty what CNS Coffee House. Oh, okay. we did a takeover yesterday. So they gave twenty percent of all proceeds at all three locations to our basic needs sector. So all of that money is going to go directly to basic needs in the community. So food, shelter. Were you community. guys when you say takeover? Were you like were you there physically? I was there. Okay. Yeah. But we do. We have a red red Rob. Ooh. We have red Robin next month. That one's that one's always really big. And then Applebee's on the twenty fifth this month. It's going to go to books. So I encourage businesses to. Are you guys streaming this when you do it? Yeah, I mean, we post it on social media a lot. Like, live, like, hey, we're here. Not so much live. I'm not. I'm not a live girl. I need yeah. to be. I need to be better at live. See, she'll with, post a story without without trying to like say you guys need us more than you think. Like these are the yeah. kind of things that that we could set up ahead of time. Yeah, we can show up. We can stream all of this live. We can get people there. Engage. No, be awesome. Because it seems like I I had no idea you guys did this. Yeah, you know. Well, we didn't really until I got here, and I was like, "Why are we not doing this?" How long have you been here? Six months. Okay. Yeah. So we've she's done us roundups. She's done takeovers. We've done the McDonald's takeover where we actually were behind there. You know, I was in the window. Food. It's the best spot to be. What? She, how long ago was this? December. I think was it the McDonald's on Fortieth. Oh my God! Were you, you there? Had, yes. I was like, "Why is it so busy?" I think that's where I did. I hand you the food. You did. Yeah, you I did. loved it. Yes, you. you they were, hated me though. They're like, get out of the window. You're taking too much time. No, no, I, I went inside. Oh, okay. I went inside and it was so busy. I was like, I've never seen the McDonald's like this before. Mm -hmm. That's what Poppin'. it was. There was a bunch of kids in there that were also helping. Right? Oh no, wait. This might have been a school that was doing something. Yeah, because cool. but I did like do. that. Yeah, we were really busy too. <laughs> so when you do these, is it? 
does it end up being pretty profitable oh, for yeah. you guys? Oh yeah. oh yeah. So we've done mod pizza. We've done Red Robin before. Red Robin hooked us up. Red Robin gave us a seven hundred dollar check. We were there for two hours just because they were like, we're gonna give you twenty percent of everything we make this night and. They really encouraged it. They're like, come back on a busier night. So we're doing a Friday next month, which nice. is going to be great. We did a Monday this last time. And that's great publicity for them as well. Amazing. Right? To say, hey, we give back to the community. But we all, they also get in front of our donor base. Right. You know, this says, hey, we're going to ask all of our donors and people in the community to come and support your business. And they do. They go and buy their office lunch. or It's a great way to have a coffee and know, like, not only did I support a small business, I have a great meal or drink from it. Right. And I gave back to the community. And how, what, so where are you guys located here? We're on 4th Street. Across from the transportation. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're right there. So you literally, when you said you walked here, you weren't kidding. No, you I walked, really walked here. Okay, you walked over here. Uh, Neighbors. How many, how many people are in your, not your organization, because it's a nationwide organization, but how many people are here locally in Yakima that work in the building? Four full-time, one part-time. Okay. So um, there's me, community engagement. There's Farron, marketing and advancement. Um, Richard Perez is our resource development. And then our executive director is Kayleen Stiles. And then our part-time person is Heather Orozco, and she does a lot of the data entry for us. So we really appreciate her being there. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's our staff. That's all of us. So you guys are mm -hmm. working to the sun up to sundown? We don't have a lot of breaks, yeah, because we're doing so many different things. And... I'm like, we need to go talk to, we need to go talk to business owners. We need to see what their needs are. Yeah. That's what I've been doing. We just left Sunnyside the other day and they're telling me. So you guys are doing events like almost weekly. We're doing a lot of events. You guys, I mean, we, you guys should be here once a week talking about your upcoming programs. I would love to. We own the Facebook group, Talk Yakima, yeah. which we have what, almost 5,000 members on there yeah. now. So this is this is your community that yeah. you're talking to. We should have you guys in here once a week doing this because it's great for us. It's publicity for us. It's getting us out in the community as well. But we're trying to find more ways to embed ourselves into the community. Yeah. And, you know, you come on here once, it's great, but you guys are doing stuff all the time. Yeah. So we should try to figure something out how we can really kind of, you know, get an itinerary from you guys what you're doing. So That'd be can, awesome. Yeah, I'm down. And we can, we can definitely put something together. Takeover supports a different... Thing. So, Cause. Uh, yeah, and I'm right. asking business owners, what are you passionate about and how can we make it so that you feel good about this takeover and this event or this, you know, right. anything. So like I said, I went to Sunnyside and I'm like, what is, what are you passionate about and how can we help you? And they're like, we need drug and alcohol resources in Sunnyside. When you guys did McDonald's, who was your point of contact in McDonald's? Um, JD Buley is on yeah. our board. Okay. Oh. So, you know, we have an in. Yeah. And we're just like, so it was all of the McDonald's that they own from Ellensburg yep. to into the so Little Valley. You, you did all of them? We did the did one, one location, but all of the sales, um, or no, they did collections. They did collections for everyone. Okay. But we can do a takeover at, at all each of them. I and imagine. This is what we're talking about. I imagine when you do the takeover, actually being present there probably adds to the, oh, 100%. the, the engagement. Well, in marketing side, right? I want to guess, of course, financially it's helpful to get proceeds and I want to support it, but I want to be there and talk to the people and let them know why we're there, yeah. where the money's going, who See, we that's, are. That's the big thing. I think if people really start to understand, I think it becomes easier for people to part with their money for one. Because like you said, we spoke earlier, you got people that are one paycheck away from being like broke. Yeah. You know, we're talking like living in your car and all of these things. So, but at the same time, these are the same people that still, those are probably the people that are donating yeah. on top of it. Oh, 100%. Right? Because they grasp this is what's going to fix our community. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we don't invite everybody back mm -hmm. because sometimes we really do see the self-interest mm -hmm. in what people are after. Oh, yeah. Disguise as nonprofits. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of a turnoff. And yeah. I think that's what the community sees. And then they lump everybody into that same turnoff. Mm -hmm. Well, we have the most nonprofits in Central Washington than we do per but, capita. But nobody knows that. No, it's there's a lot. Well, this is something that um, goes back to what we we're saying earlier about the communication between these nonprofits as well. Um, we're having a lot of saturation um, in the area with nonprofit organizations, and a lot of them are duplicating services. So it's hard to find funding for some of them when they're doing something that that's that somebody that else is already doing. Yes. Yeah. So, Seems to be a lot of. Yeah. Yes. And then you've got them fighting over. It, then it just confuses the person that needs the help mm -hmm. because everybody's that's it's almost like the person's down and out on their luck is becomes a lead. Mm 
Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, who's gonna? We we need this. We need this suffering person so we can get more money. It's not about helping the person, right? It's about getting the funding. And sometimes it is like that, and it's really a lot of times. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so I would love to work something. Maybe we can talk a little bit more yeah. about what you guys got going on. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you have some kind of itinerary schedule that's kind of out there. Yep. The moms that are watching this, they need to see that you're you're a mom. You've got your kid here. You know, she didn't want to go to school today. You're talking about how your child wants to run around and do podcasts. You know, these are real live people yeah. doing real life things that are out there in the streets. That so, if anybody has an idea of what the regular person fucking needs, mm-hmm. they're kind of sitting here across the table from me. Yeah. So we wanna we wanna embed ourselves into this community, the good, bad, and the ugly. And you guys seem to have a good foothold because it's not you're not just a nonprofit. You are like the funding source for the nonprofits. Mm-hmm. So we're kind of like getting into the blood bank here of, of spreading through the stream. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever, use us, abuse us. You know, we can figure something out. You know. No, that's awesome. We appreciate that yeah. a lot. Thank you. And so, we're looking for the collaborations as well. Yeah, what do you want people to know about that we didn't discuss? And, you know, maybe we set up another 30 day out to have you get a little more structure on it. But what do you guys want people to know about that we didn't talk about today? Um, I think it's important that people understand that um, United Way isn't just a pass through organization because we do get that stigma. Um, But we're actually out in the community. We provide volunteer opportunities. We're bringing businesses into the nonprofit side of things as well. Um, like Shields Noble X did a whole collection with their company for um, like food, dry goods and things. And like we just want everybody to find how they can work together. And I feel like that's kind of one of the big things. Like we're kind of like the glue of the community. We're trying to bring the corporate side and the nonprofit side together um, and create these relationships with everybody. Yeah, the community has to be cohesive, right? We need we need everybody to do their part if we really do want to see change. And that's just how it has to be. So like Barbara said, each business really has something they're passionate about. Some want to do personal hygiene drive. They're like, you know, I really want to get soaps and conditioners and soap shampoos. And they'll do that. And that's amazing because we could do so much with that to the community. Some, I went with a business owner today. He wants to give um, somebody in need a new floor, like carpet or he's like, let me know a single mom who's struggling. And we have, you know, through our agencies, we're able to find the right, we're able to connect him to people that would benefit from it because he's passionate about that. And that's his resource. He's, he does flooring. He's like, I want to help. I can give them a new floor. I mean, that's huge to somebody who's you know, who's just moved into a house, maybe just got off the streets and they have kids with them, their new carpet. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So everybody can help in their own unique way and together that would make the community amazing. So if somebody has an idea that they want to bring to you guys, that's like a nonprofit idea where where they don't have the money to do it, but it's a great idea, who do they bring that to? Um, I know that a lot of people actually bring those conversations to the Community Foundation. Um, Is that part of you guys? No, they're actually a neighbor of ours, but we've done a lot of work together. Okay. Um, we are constantly... It's called Community Foundation? The yeah. Yak- or Yakima they could just... Community oh, Foundation. they're talking about like creating a new nonprofit? Okay, so if say somebody um, has a nonprofit they think is a great idea, they go ahead and start their 501c3 or whatever, mm-hmm. um, and they're looking for funding. So our process starts, um, like I said, we do cycles. So we would open up um, a portal on our website for LOIs. That's a letter of intent. And that basically says, hey, this is what I do. This is what I want to do. This is how your funding would help us. And then we sort through the LOIs to see, you know, um, who fits within our um, pillars, which are education, um, basic needs, income, and health. So those are kind of the things we focus on. Um, Right now, we're kind of really pulling in a whole family approach. So we're kind of looking at programs that, you know, are there for the entire entire family. We want to, you know, in that intergenerational poverty. Um, So they would we would look through their letter of intents and see who best fits. And then we would bring it to like we would do that as a committee because we have a um, community investment committee that looks these over. Uh, So it's not just United Way and our bias. Mm -hmm. Um, And then from that point, we would send them an invitation to apply for the grant. Um, And so that just entails a couple other questions about, you know, what your program is exactly, what's your anticipated outreach, um, things like that. And then after that grant cycle, 
um, or after that grant application, we would, um, as the committee would look it over, they would use kind of a scoring rubric to see like um, the impact kind of. And then they would uh, grant them either what they're asking um, or something below that. Right. Up like in between it somewhere. Yeah. Is that process laid out on the site? Um, I have not checked it out okay. because I know that we are, we've switched our layouts on our website. Because I, I would like to see people come forward because I, I, I just think there's not enough. I mean, there's, there's too many of the same things. There's yeah. not enough mm-hmm. of some of the stuff that you just. Yeah, unique, I, unique needs. Yeah. I think we've got a lot of ideas to do that and we just need the right people to do it with because mm-hmm. it takes, takes an army. Oh, you know? it takes it, everybody. It really does. Yeah. So, uh, ladies, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, Farrah Lang, Barbara. Ken Mark Gurney. Uh, maybe we can do a shadow with you guys when you go do one of these events. Maybe mm-hmm. we can come with you guys, help out, videotape some stuff, put That'd some behind be awesome. the scenes content and, you know, you know send you a bill. No, <laughs> we got a bunch of fun ones too with breweries. Oh, so a lot I, of brewery. I can drink. Yeah, the tap right down the road is going to do a connection with us too. Okay. Do you guys do? Do you guys do any like black tie events type things? We have a bingo brunch and bubbly coming up in. Um, it's bingo not like brunch a gala. and bubbly is that like champagne? Yeah. Okay. And, and and fifteen rounds of bingo, and each round is a a luxury designer handbag or swag. When, when is this? for guys too. Saturday, May eleventh. Saturday, May. Why didn't we bring this up earlier? When he's like, "Is there anything else you want people to know?" Oh, this is because this is the thing. It's it's so much. There's so much. That's yeah. why we're gonna bring you back on. Two weeks, they're gonna be back. Um, this is actually unexpected, but amazingly yeah. beneficial. Yeah, I really liked it. I had no idea what I was coming into. Yeah. Yeah. It's been awesome. All right.